Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, we're gonna be going over how to finally make custom abilities, which means that we're finally making custom effects for our game. In the last two videos, I went over how to start programming in PSDK and how to make monkey patches. So I think it's totally free reign that we start diving into the actual code and like start making our own stuff. I'm gonna let you off a little bit easy because in today's video, we're just gonna make one ability. I'm gonna do three different videos. We're gonna do one that is a little bit simple, but I'm still gonna go over some good tips on just how to actually like, you know, do some testing and, and whatnot. And then in the next video, we're gonna be going over making a little bit more of a fused ability. And then the video after that, we're gonna be doing one that's gonna be modifying a lot of kind of like pre-existing uh, functions or methods in PSDK. And so I don't think I could really cover all three of these in one video and do a really good job and go into detail as much as I want to. So instead I'm settling on just one ability for this video, which is gonna be the simplest ability. It's basically an already existing ability, but a bit weaker. This ability is called Night Vision. It is essentially compound eyes, but only applies at night. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our Explorer and we are gonna make sure that we are in our whoops, that we're in our scripts folder. We're gonna make a new file. We're gonna call this whatever you want for your numbers, but remember it has to be between five zeros and 99,999. So as usual, I'm gonna go with 00100, and then I'm gonna do night vision. So you wanna do the name of the ability, and then you could do something like underscore effect if you're gonna end up doing multiple files, but this is the most simple one, so we don't really need to do that. We're just gonna do nightvision.rb. And like I said, it is basically copying an existing ability. So we're just gonna look for that existing ability. Now, when you register an ability in PSDK, which you have to do for any ability that has code, you need to do it in a specific way. So what we can do to easily find like another ability's code is just type in colon and then the DB symbol of that ability, which in this case is gonna be compound eyes. And then you're gonna wanna look for a file that looks like this not one that looks like this. If you're looking at this, you're looking at the wrong thing. So we wanna look at this and we wanna copy everything and then we wanna go to our file and we're gonna paste it and then we're gonna press undo, which is gonna format everything back to how it's supposed to be. And then I can just close the compound eyes RB file because I don't need that anymore. Now immediately what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna change the class name from compound eyes to our abilities class name, which is night vision. And then over here, we're gonna change this to the class name as well. And then over here is the DV symbol of the ability that we're making, which is gonna be night vision. When you're creating a new ability, it's gonna be inheriting from the ability class. It's gonna be in the effects module, which is also gonna be in the battle module. And how this method works, chance of hit multiplier, is this is gonna be called every single turn, no matter who's attacking, as long as somebody with this ability is on the field. That's why you have a check like this, which is saying return one, return one. So we're multiplying the accuracy of the move by one. So we're not changing it. If the user of the move doesn't have this ability. So what at target means is essentially saying the owner of the ability, which is different than this target, which is the target of the move, as you can see here is the same as this, which is saying if the user of the move, because like I said, this gets called whenever anybody attacks while somebody with this ability is on the field. However, it won't matter if we have this initial check here, which is basically saying, hey, if you don't have this ability, ignore me. Just keep doing what you're doing. Now, if you do have the ability, we need to do another check, which is checking if it's actually nighttime because that's what night vision does. So we need to return one unless and then we're gonna do a check for a game switch here. We're actually gonna do a check for two game switches. So we're gonna do game switches, and then in brackets, we're gonna type Yuki colon colon SW colon colon TJN. And then we wanna do nighttime, press tab, and then we're gonna do or, and then we can copy this again, cause I don't feel like typing all that again. And then we can go back to where it says TJN, and then this time we want to go with sunset. So now it's going to return one if the user of the move doesn't have the ability. And then it's going to return one unless it's nighttime or it's the evening. So this is basically saying if it's one of these two things, we're going to go to this return. The reason we don't have to worry about if the user is the holder of the target is because we're using a return here. So this check happens first. This will never happen. This check never even gets applied if this check never gets validated. Now for some good 
tips on just how to actually like test and debug your code. What we want to do here is we're going to want to do a puts and just to show you how these things actually work, because I had to do this for myself multiple times to understand how these things work. We can do user dot name and then we do a colon. And then what I want you to do is do a pound and then in curly brackets, we're going to do user dot name. And then outside of those curly brackets, we're going to do the same thing for the target. So target dot name. And then we're going to do the same thing, target dot name. And then we're going to do at target dot name. And this is going to show us who the user of the move is, the target of the move and who the holder of the ability is so that you can kind of have a better understanding of how these things work. We're also going to go under here and we're going to do a puts for checking the time. And then under that, we're going to do one more puts, which is going to say accuracy is getting modified. So now if we want to test this in game, we're going to have to go to our database and we're going to have to create a new ability for night vision. And as you see down here, this identifier is what we needed to make sure is right here when we register the ability. Now to make it easier for yourself, you should probably give this ability to a Pokemon. So in our case, we're going to give it to Pikachu and then we're going to save and then we're going to launch this in the regular game mode so we don't see too many debug messages because typically when you're like testing in a battle you're going to see a ton of debug messages so what i personally do is i launch outside of debug mode so i don't see all that just so i see my puts so since we gave pikachu this ability we want to do s.mi.add pokemon and then the db symbol for pikachu and then the level and then we'll see here that now we have a pikachu who has night vision and then if we wanted to give it to an existing Pokemon already in our party, like Weezing here, we'll just go outside. We'll do actors, money sign actors, and then in brackets, we'll do the index of the Pokemon, which in our case is zero. And then we'll do dot ability equals the DB symbol, which in this case is night vision. And then if we go and check again, we'll see that its ability got changed to night vision. Now to test to see if this is actually working, we'll have to go into a battle. We're gonna go into one against a Charmander real quickly. And then since it's only being called when it has a chance of modifying the hit of a move, it's only getting called in between moves. So if we hit tackle here, we should see a puts, which is saying the user of the move is wheezing. The target of the move is Charmander and the target or the person who has this ability is wheezing and it's checking the time. However, we never saw this puts here, which is saying that the accuracy actually got modified. And that's because the game doesn't think that it's night or evening time. Now, if you look at my clock, it does say it's 1040 PM, but if we look outside, it's not actually nighttime. Now, if we wanted to see if for some reason my switch is just not working, we can actually copy the condition we had there and paste it here. And we're going to see that it's actually false. We could also copy both of them and paste that. Checking for both of them would uh, show a true or a false, which we see here, it's actually showing a false. The reason for that is because if you look outside, it looks like it's daytime. In my intro, I forgot to actually give the day and night system. So we need to make sure that we turn on the day night system. So to do that, I'm just gonna interact with somebody here in my house. I made sure to turn on that the time is gonna use the system clock, which means it's using a real time system. I made sure that I turned on the time tint and then I made sure to turn off that time is disabled just in case it was turned on for some odd reason. Now you could also check these things by doing money sign, game switches, and then doing in brackets, the number, so in this case, seven, and we'll see that that's turned off. We could also do 10 and see that that's also turned off. So neither of these things were turned on, which means that the game would never actually know if it was day or night. So to get into this house, since I have two trainers here and I'm not in debug mode, I'm gonna have to utilize a command in the command prompt. So I'm gonna click somewhere on the map, figure out where I wanna go. And then down here in the bottom right corner, we have the ID and then the X and the Y coordinates that I wanna go to. So in this case, we're gonna type debugger warp and then the map ID, which is three, the X, which is six and the Y, which is eight. And then when we open up this, we're gonna see that I'm inside now. And then when we interact with him, we're gonna see if those switches got turned on. So game switch seven is now true and game switch 10 is now true. So now when we go outside, it should have this night system. Now, when we go into a battle and our Pokemon has the night vision ability, we're gonna see some different puts, right? So we're gonna to go to tackle 
and this time we should see that the accuracy is actually getting modified, which means that our that our ability is working how we want it. And then when Charmander attacks, that it's not even checking the time, it's not modifying the ability's accuracy because it doesn't matter, because he doesn't own the ability like we can see here. And before I wrap this up, I just wanted to show this off real quickly that in the link down below or on the PSDK GitLab, there is a file that is gonna explain how to use the battle system. This is how you're gonna learn how to make a ton of unique things. This is how you're gonna learn how to do almost anything in the battle system. This is a very well-documented uh, page. It has tons of expl uh, explanations and tons of documentation. And it will even show you different things that you can use, like different hooks that you can use. So for example, how we have chance of hit multiplier that we use in our ability. If you just paste that here, you're going to see that it's one of the many, many hooks that you can use for your abilities or even your moves. So definitely check out this. This is linked down below. This is pretty much how I learned how to do anything. It's like I said, it's going to show you how to do weather effects, terrain effects, move effects, item effects, ability effects, how to register abilities. Like if you don't want to wait for the next video, just look at this. Like this is literally how you'll learn how to do anything. This page is awesome. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Hopefully this one helped you at least understand a little bit more on how to do like the basics or just how to like reference another ability for code or just something. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.